What's up guys? Welcome to another Build It Break Garage episode. Today's episode is a special secret project that I have going on. I'm pretty stoked about it and I'm really having, I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping this works. But uh, so far what I've done is I cranked the boost up in Midori a little bit. So now she's at a full like five to six pounds instead of the three to four that she was pushing before on the other wastegate. But of course, now that I've added more air, I'm starting to run into fueling issues. The reason, or the way that I've been getting away with what I've been getting away with is by putting bigger injectors into the car. It compensates for the extra boost, but there's some trade-offs when you, when you start doing injectors like that. So I actually made a graph here, and this is where I'm at basically. So I started before I even boosted the car with 26 pound injectors. They got decent gas mileage, they had a decent idle, they drove well, but boost was no way in hell I was going to boost on those. 36 pounders is where I'm at now, those have decent MGG, they're pretty bad, but they're not they're not 26 good, but they're definitely, uh, they're not as bad as the rest, so they weren't too bad. The idle is pretty good, uh, don't have to worry about it dying or stalling out or anything. Driving, it drives just fine and under a little bit of boost it's pretty good um but i'm start but i am at that limit right now where this is starting to become a negative uh so then i went out and bought a set well first i, I tried a set of 44s out uh 44 pounders those had horrible horrible mpg you almost watch the gas mileage go down they also idled like absolute crap uh to the point where the car almost didn't want to run the driving was absolutely horrible because the car didn't basically want to run. But once it got into boost, it was a it was a rocket ship. But the rest of these things are kind of important if you want to actually drive the car in other anything other than a boost setting. So I figured if I had the 36s that ran good, the 44s that barely ran, if I cut the middle, I would be in pretty safe zone. So I got a set of 40 pounders. The MPG is still a negative. It's definitely worse than the 36s. Idle was still bad wasn't as bad as the 44s but it was still bad driving it was bad it definitely had some misses and hiccups and it wasn't liking it but once again once it got under boost it was phenomenal now you guys see my dilemma so right now i am on the 36 pound injectors that basically for driving idling being able to actually operate the car that is the injectors that i'm going with so now i want to be able to have the boost still at five to six pounds now and part of the problem is I can't just inject or put a different injector in because obviously I'm at the limit of that. So what do I do? Um, besides Mega Squirt, which is the smart idea, which is what everyone pretty much expects me to do, I'm going a different route and I am actually going to be using, I am going to be using the wet side of a nitrous kit. So this normally would be accompanied by nitrous with uh, uh, nitrous solenoid and everything. If you're familiar with nitrous at all, basically this, in this will inject fuel directly into the charge pipe. And I also have a switch right here. It's called the hob switch. And this is supposed to activate about three to four pounds. So once this, act once this sees three to four pounds, it's going to start squirting fuel right into the intake charge it'll create a bigger injector under boost because it'll start adding power or it'll start adding gas when it sees boost and it should work the way i'm thinking so uh i do have my fingers crossed i don't i've never seen anyone do this before it might have been done i'm not sure i've seen kits where you can add in an injector basically doing the same thing that i'm doing except not using nitrous parts like actually using like a real fuel injector and like a little computer to control it i think i got it pretty good worked out system right now so I'm gonna give it a shot hopefully it works I'm only waiting on one more part currently to show up very minimal part but it's kind of important so this goes to the hob switch so I can actually hook it up to a vacuum line uh, that should be here later today though so I'm gonna go ahead and get started working on this uh, we're working on Midori and basically I have to I have to get this charge pipe out of here because uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to weld on the bung for the nitrous jet, yeah, I'm gonna have to weld this bung on for the nitrous jet to be able to thread into the charge piping. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that and hopefully by the time I'm ready for it, that uh, little thing shows up in the mail and uh, 
we can actually get a test of this today. So I'm super excited. I've been waiting for this for about a week and a half. I'm just really curious if it's gonna work. I can't wait to uh, can't wait to drive it. So let's get to work. All right, quick little check-in. Got the intercooler pipe that I needed off, and I already marked it where I want to put the nozzle. Uh, another thing that I just did is I took the nozzle and I marked where the tip is on it, so that way, that way I know which way it's supposed to be facing when it's in the pipe. I don't have to look at the pipe, so. That'll uh, be a nice indicator. But so far I got that far. So next is to drill a hole in the pipe and then weld the bung in. And for that, I'm gonna need shoes. So I'll have to go inside and get some shoes because I learned my lesson welding in flip-flop a long time ago. And uh, yeah, needless to say, that's one memory I will never forget. So yeah, let's get this uh, bung welded up and start reinstalling it. Alright, just like that, I got the bung all welded up. It is not the prettiest thing, but it's consistent all the way around. So now to hit it with the, the die grinder and clean up these nasty looking welds and throw a fresh coat of paint on, and it's ready to go back in the car. So, uh, yeah, let's keep going. Okay, well, I got the got the weld all cleaned up. It actually looks pretty nice now. And I painted it black. And luckily the paint's already dried. But before I stick that in, I'm gonna go ahead and plumb up the solenoid because it'll be a lot easier to do without having the pipe in the way. So basically, what I gotta do is I gotta take this fuel pressure gauge off and basically I'm just attaching the hose right to here. I already have the fuel gauge, so Schrader valve that's normally in there is already out, so I don't have to remove that, but if you're doing this at home, you'll have to remove the Schrader valve or else it will not supply fuel to the line. Since I have that already out, I'm gonna go ahead and take that fuel gauge off and go ahead and put in the dash four line that goes to it. Well, I got the first line mounted, and by the way, that is a dash four line that comes off of that uh, test port. So you can ba you can literally just take a dash four line and screw it right to there as long as you take out the Schrader valve and you got a source for fuel. Next thing I got to do is I got to Teflon tape. The port's going in here because it's one eighth NPT, and then the port coming out of the solenoid is actually dash three because. That is a dash three. So originally I thought it was a dash four, so I ordered everything for dash four. So I had to run out this morning and get the dash three stuff. And thank God that Mazda Auto Parts had it in stock. And uh, it was actually not a bad deal either. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these fittings Teflon taped up and then uh, mock up in the bay should be done. Oh, and also this isn't gonna be a finished product. Um, I'm throwing this all together loosely just to prove my point. And then later I'll worry about cleaning it all up and making it look nice. But for right now, it's just kind of going in, going to be kind of zip tied in place. And I just want to see if this is going to be a viable option or not. So uh, wish me luck. All right, well, I just got those lines Teflon taped and they are in. I even got the line pretty much on to there. I left it loose because I might have to take it back off. When you're dealing with NPT type fittings, uh, you want to use uh, obviously Teflon tape or glue or Teflon tape or the uh, liquid stuff. But the big key is when it feels tight, it is tight. Don't keep tightening it until it breaks basically and it will. 
So you just get it nice and tight and orient it in the way you want it and then just leave it alone. So I got uh, this hooked up. Now I am gonna now I'm gonna go ahead and put the charge pipe back in and see how much of a pain in the ass it's gonna be to get to that uh, nozzle because I would kind of, the master cylinder might be in the way. So fingers crossed it's not. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and stuff this pipe back up and then we're just that we're one step closer to having it done. I just did the first startup uh, just to check for leaks and everything. I did have a small leak that was right there at the fuel line where I attached the four, uh, AN4. It was leaking just a little bit. I just took it off, cleaned it up, and tightened it some more, and now it's not leaking. I even brought a battery over and tested the solenoid to make sure it's spraying. And it's spraying definitely. Uh, it's doing something in the intake, so hopefully, it, hopefully this works. I'm having my hopes are very high that this is gonna work. The only thing I gotta do now is wire the rest of the system up, uh, and I'm still waiting on that one part that I need to be able to connect. It is a piece that connects this 1 8 NPT to a barbed fitting, so that way I can hook it up to a vacuum line and have boost reference to it. So uh, I'm just waiting on that final piece of the puzzle, and then once that gets here, throwing it on and I'm going for a ride, so and I'll take you guys along with me. We'll see if this actually does something. I, I'm stoked, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work, but uh, you never know, so. Okay, so I got everything buttoned up. Um, everything in the engine bay mechanically is done. Now I just gotta do the electrical, and I was waiting on a part to do this hob switch, but I don't think it's gonna show up today, and I don't wanna do this again. Uh, I don't wanna wait another day, so um, I got this instead. This is gonna work out just the same, but uh, a little different, and of course, Right when I'm finishing up here, uh, it looks like it's about to start raining like no other, so this might be a wet wet test ride, which kind of sucks, but luckily the car isn't clean, so I'm not too upset about that. Wet tires equal like no traction with boost though, and I'm trying to figure out if this is working, so fingers crossed we at least get one test run in before it rains. Hi guys, what's up? Uh, so I'm about to go on my first test drive. Don't mind the top dash, the being spaghetti, everything's crazy in that, uh, I, yeah, just be nice. I'm about to go on my first test drive and hopefully this works. We'll see on the wideband, so let's go. first ride and at first it looked good and then I don't know if it was still working after a couple hits yeah, everything looks good in here um, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab an LED strip or light and I am going to wire it so that way when the hob switch turns the system on it'll turn on with the hob system so I can tell that it's actually doing something and uh, I might just need to go up a jet or something but uh, so far I everything's working it's just I'm got to tune it still so um, I'm gonna go ahead and tinker around for a little bit and I'll uh, tell you what I found hi guys well I got the system working I did uh, have to tweak it a little bit the um, hob switch was adjusted completely wrong so in the video there in the test drive that you guys saw it wasn't working at all, so that was a uh, total dud. So I got it working. It's adding fuel, it's definitely doing that, but now I'm getting this huge ass backfire, like mid boost, and I gotta figure out what to do about that. Um, but it is adding fuel, uh, wide band, it's keeping the, now it's, it's keeping the higher amount of boost that I'm running in the safe zone as far as air fuel ratio goes. 
and right now I'm going to go ahead and change the plugs and gap them correctly and hopefully that fixes the mid boost breakup. So um, fingers crossed that it's that simple. My system actually works just flawlessly which is freaking awesome but uh, yeah I gotta figure out this uh, timing issue now. I know I should just go with Mega Squirt already or a standalone, but I, I want to figure this out. I'm, I'm going to MacGyver the shit out of this. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then hopefully I'll be able to get you guys a real test drive because right now it's currently raining and I'm not taking the car back out in the rain because this thing, that might actually be part of my problem is I took it out in the rain for my first test drive and certain, we certain wires to the coil packs get wet and they uh, they start don't not liking each other. So um, that could be a big part of my problem too. So I'm gonna let everything dry up real good. Okay guys, well I took the car back out for a little test drive after I changed the spark plugs and cleaned up the wires. Um, I'm still having the breakup issue. I do know that it is not from the new injector. Um, I unplugged the system and it did the same thing even without having the added fuel added. So um, one thing I do know is I shouldn't drive the car in the rain. Um, I have some bare wires in the coil pack harness um, that when they get wet they start to short circuit and that causes bad misfires and everything. It basically causes the, what I'm experiencing. So, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a clean run today. Uh, I will show you the best run that I had. Um, but as you can tell in the video, it is still missing and pissing. It's pissed off. So, um, hopefully, once these wires dry out, then uh, everything will be back to normal. And then I will show you guys uh, a full pull with the new fuel setup. Uh, it should be pretty good. From what I can tell in between the misfires, it is hauling some serious ass. But uh, once it misses, it just completely goes away. Also, real quick, if you're watching the video where I actually had kind of a clean run, what's kind of cool is I set up my test flight. So that way... Whenever that lit up, that was telling me that the um, fuel was being sprayed into the intake. So if you watch closely, you can see it in the corner of the clip. That every time that light turns on, that's when it's adding extra fuel. So good news is, is that it is working. When I first took it for a test drive, that was not working. I had it, uh, I had the hob switch adjusted wrong. So uh, what sucks is that that could have probably been the clean pulls that I wanted, but uh, it didn't end up going that way. So hopefully these wires dry out and we get a good run so thank you all right guys what's up uh so i'm gonna cut this clip in uh but this the video the chain uh the end of this video is going to be different than i was originally planning so i got everything installed and went to test drive the car that day and as you can tell i was having problems and this is what it sounded like without boost So I was having a backfire issue and I couldn't figure out what it was. I replaced, I literally replaced everything. I was, uh, this was uh, about a week later, I came out in the garage and I replaced the coil packs, the ignition control module, I tried to swap ECUs, I changed the uh, wires and coils, I changed the fuel injectors, but nothing was working. I was getting really frustrated and finally I got it working. See the map sensor was the crank position sensor. Now the car works flawlessly. The system actually works better than I thought it was going to, which I am so ecstatic about that. I can't even tell you. But now that it works, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a guy, or I'm gonna go ahead and take on a little test drive, and I'm gonna show you up close to the wide band and the boost boost gauge. And also, there's a little light that is on top of my dash that. It signifies uh, when, when that light comes on. It'll signif that signifying that the fuel injector, the extra fuel injector, is actually on. So keep an eye out for that too. I'll throw you guys uh, in the car, and uh, we'll head out for a ride.
by, so as you can see from that clip, uh, car's working flawlessly, it's quick, um, sounds freaking great. So I am going to go ahead and leave the video off here now, and uh, thank you all very much for watching and sticking with me through this ordeal. I seriously thought the car was a goner for a minute, but uh, thank God it's not. She lives to boost another day, so... But anyway, you guys have a great day, you have a great weekend, and thank you all for watching. Make sure you comment, subscribe, and like this video. It really helps out a lot. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.